Hey everybody, so today I have here, this is a MSI a gaming laptop. It's really nice. Uh, no power. It's not charging. I think that was the issue why it's actually in here. This is pretty cool. It actually has a nice little Intel i5 sticker. This is a 10 gen. Silver one's usually 10 gen. Uh, GTX, uh, who knows what? I don't know. It just says GTX. It doesn't say RTX, so it's not the latest one. Not the latest and greatest, but still probably a pretty nice machine. You could probably play a lot of games at very reasonable settings and frame rate. So we're in here for a power repair. And just by actually looking at this on this side, it's really easy to tell actually what the problem is. And you can see here, it's really easy to tell. Uh, there's the hole that goes in here. This is where you plug in your charger. Um, you don't see any, any piece in there. You just see blackness in there. And there's supposed to be something. Uh, the pin's very, very deep. You can see the piece of plastic actually broken off there. Um, and we need to do a replacement on this one because that's the problem. It's really dangerous to actually be having it like this and try to plug it in. You're taking a lot of voltage from the, the AC adapter, you're plugging it directly in, and uh, you're going to be touching the wrong thing. You're going to be touching metal with metal, and you're going to be touching metal with metal, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to short something make the laptop worse, especially if it is powering on and then it's considered not charging. Um, always be aware of that if you feel it a little bit loose or you're not feeling clicking as much or you're not feeling that nice little push when you when you push in the, the AC adapter don't definitely want to keep doing that if, if it feels loose if you have any problems or you don't see any plastic you just see metal you don't want to touch metal with metal that's definitely gonna make it the situation worse uh, especially if it's turning on and it's just not charging um, you just need to get it replaced that'll fix it so it's a pretty straightforward repair otherwise you don't want to short the laptop itself so we're going to be doing a DC jack repair obviously for this one because that's the problem so let's just go ahead and uh, do it right now okay so we have it here we're gonna to go to the back and we do see something that uh, makes it really obvious is that the factory seal has actually been broken, which means it's usually been open before. That's not a great thing, it's not a great sign. We also do see a lot of screws actually missing on the back here. Um, definitely not a good sign if it's been opened. Uh, for this model, um, the back cover screws are also the motherboard screws. Um, for a lot of these, that's why it's really easy. You can see the heat sink, you can see a lot of things. You actually see part of the board in here. You see the little bronze colors. You can see that that's, you'll see the little ground colors everywhere. You'll see the bronze colors, those are the ground that actually does go for the board so you're not shorting the board while you're plugging it in. So there's only a few screws. Uh, the factory one obviously is lifted. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, just open this up and see if there's any extra damage. We don't want it to, to be going down the rabbit hole for our DC jack repair, but there's always a possibility of that, especially if it's been opened and worked on before. Uh, a lot of screws are missing. All right, so we got the middle one. The audio ports there, they actually get caught in the thing holds by this way see that then you you have to go up this way so you have to unhook it otherwise it'll get caught there and you can see right on the side it's not a typical push down it's more of a lift up type of thing so or lift up and out and around type of thing so all right so you just wanted to make sure you take out the battery here just lift it up try to use the plastic if you try to pull by the cable you can always uh, damage the actual battery itself there or battery connection there so you want to do that underneath so removing anything that's attached to it just do that. I haven't felt like I've done these in forever. It's like a let's play for, for people. Let's take out the speaker. Board's a little bit under the battery. The battery is actually a little bit of heat here, so I'm not. I'm gonna wait for pulling it out a little bit later. Obviously, we have to still do the heat sink, so let's just do the heat sink too. And. To get the LCD cable, see it's wrapped around here. It's underneath there to avoid any damage. I mean, you can still do it, but if you want to avoid any damage. Okay, so let's take up the heat sink. It's going to be a little bit sticky. Um, be careful putting too much force. You don't want to rip anything out, especially if you missed a screw. But it's definitely going to feel like you're pulling something a little bit tough there. So it won't come very straightforward and easy. So this has to come out. And you want to be, be in mind, or you want to have the mind of where all these uh, thermal pads are. Especially if anything ripped on the side, you want to make sure these are exactly the same. You don't want to be messing with thermal pads because they're there for a reason. They are there for a reason, people. Do not do that. So there's your last screw. Um, but we want to put we'll put thermal paste on this too. So let's go ahead and remove this last screw. You can tell they did this. That's definitely there's no way that's not on purpose. It's really to prevent people from from doing this. So we lift this up, and this is going to come out this way because we don't want to. This is the battery. As you see that, just pull up this way, going away from the battery. But I do feel another cable, and I think that's the keyboard cable, if I'm not mistaken. 
So the keyboard cable is on the other side of this one too, and we also need to remove <laughs> the keyboard cable. Uh, you can see actually here, I probably should have noticed that anyway. So we do have to remove the battery regardless. Um, be careful doing that because this is a bit of a pain. Okay, let me just lift this up. It's very sticky over here. Go ahead and take this out. That's your adhesion is on the sides here. So it might be maybe be able to reuse it. It's usually not the greatest thing to reuse any type of adhesion, but there we go. So that's what you get underneath here. Well, I guess this can also be how to show how to do this too. But you can see the connections are under here. So they're underneath and they're on the other side. So the best way to do it is just go this way because you don't want to ever go this way to pull it because it's easier to tug it. See, now we can see all the connections this way. Just fold it very gently. And you just want to take these out very gently. It's very easy to damage these latches here. So we'll take these up. Just pull down on the latch towards this way, towards where the cable is, and just pull it out like that. And probably the same with each one of these. So that's your keyboard, it's a backlight, and then there's a trackpad. And it shouldn't be that much force, be very low as you can. And this one should be a fold one, just like that. There you go. Now we have the board is detached fully. Now there's a better, here now you can see a lot better. Um, before it was a little bit harder because it was darker, but you can see the hole and you can see this little metal. You can almost see through it, right? Yeah, you can actually see through it. And that's really dangerous because you want to be plugging in an adapter where there's a hole <laughs> and it's going to be touching the board. So you don't want to do that. So we have it out now. And we're just going to be doing the replacement now for it. All right, so we got a replacement part here. And you can see that this is a solder connection. So we want to make sure we get the same one. And it has to be exactly the same. It can't be close to it. It needs to be exactly the same because it's very unique where the connections are, right? And where some of the hooks are and how it's going to mount itself there. So these have to be exactly. So this is how it's supposed to look like. You'll see it with the pin in here. See, see how much nice that looks? There's a nice thick pin in there. And then you see that. On this side, how there's just a, like a big hole, there should be something always blocking that, right, and taking in the charge, taking your 19 volts. So we're gonna go ahead and swap this out, replace it, and um, then we'll go ahead and test it, make sure it works, make sure there's no other damage to it. Okay, so here's the jack. We want to make sure that we remove it, and we're gonna be mixing some new solder in with the factory solder. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it a lot easier to remove and heat up and for the solder to melt. Factory solder can be very, very, very stubborn and not want to come off. So the best way to do that is just to mix some old with some new. So it'll make it a lot easier. We want to make sure we flow it um, definitely from each side. We can go make sure it's balanced. You can go left to right, up to down. You can see it's balanced ev very evenly where the heat's going to be applied. And that's going to make sure that each um, part of the solder is actually going to be loose and then it's just going to be able to fall off. Uh, we don't want to tug down the actual jack itself there because it's very easy to damage the trace is there and you can rip it off and then you have a bigger problem than that. So it's going to fall down. We're going to make sure it actually does come totally off. And the back one is where that hook is. And you can see this right here. That's where the main connection is. That's where it makes the connection to the actual uh, device itself where you get the charge, where you get 19 volts. So now we want to make sure we clean off all these holes. We want to do that very, very well. We want to be able to see through the holes. And that's that knows when we put it down the new jack that it's actually going to be placed flat and it's going to be very nice and there won't be any bumps or anything. You need to have these holes absolutely perfect. So we're going to use our copper here and we're also going to mix that with some flux and that's going to help uh, loosen up the extra solar that goes in there. And sometimes you can just squeeze in your little hot iron and then it's going to remove a lot easier. Then you want to make sure it's totally clean. Then we can put on the new jack and uh, make sure it all looks good to go. It's pretty easy to solder out once you get in, just connecting some solder back. So that's about it. And put this on. I did check voltage already. It does look good. There's already a 19. So I want to make sure it powers on though, because uh, you get your 19 and a half there, which is great. Obviously that's what you want, but uh, it doesn't turn on until it turns on. So, right. All right. So we got to put in a RAM stick. There we go. Now I think we should be all good to go. So let's go ahead, plug it in, test it. It's not totally in, but so this part, there's a button on the board. Should be able to hit. There we go. Fans are spinning. There's MSI logo. So that's good. So the charger is definitely working. And it looks to be good.
we got a nice display, we've got a screen, everything's plugged in. Well, all we have to do is uh, we'll put it back. We'll make sure we test everything else out, obviously, too. Uh, let's see how this is going to fit in. I think this should still be okay. I want to make sure this doesn't wobble or just fall out when it comes. I might have to put a little bit of adhesive if I feel I need to. Sometimes putting a little bit of heat, too, is going to help it out. But the top cover is obviously going to hold it in, too. So maybe I can heat it up a little bit so it just does that. And we'll put some pressure on this. Make sure. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's not moving. So just put a little bit of pressure. You can also put a little bit of heat. That's probably what we could do here too. Just put a little bit of heat on it. Make sure it's okay. And that's what that's going to do is it's going to loosen up the adhesive a little bit and then it's going to harden a little bit better. Everything else looks to be good. Always want to double check. Make sure everything's plugged in before you put it on. And put the back cover back on. And then put our board screws on through the back cover. Uh, what you want to do, you want to put this this way. So you see that? Um, you want to look at the auxiliary cables or holes with the headphone and the mic jack over here we will put it in over here first because if you latch this on this is going to be a little bit better this way and then it could just fall right in so it should be totally flat totally good once these are in then the rest of the side is going to kind of fall into place and then you just screw everything back so thank you guys for watching this video on how to re replace the DC jack on the MSI GF 75 thin it's a really nice laptop, nice gaming laptop. It's one of my favorite Steel Series keyboards. Oh man, it just feels oh, it feels so good. I just love this keyboard. I love always the, the keyboards on MSI. But thanks for watching for the repair. Um, we really hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, please uh, leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. We do lots of MacBook liquid spill repairs. We do lots of uh, Windows, DC jack repairs, um, computer repairs in general, software repairs that we see are very informative and may interest you guys. So definitely go ahead and check those out. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.